Introduction, Analytics for Leaders, Data-Driven Management. Welcome to Analytics for Leaders. As a future business leader and manager, it is essential for you to have a strong grounding in the basics of analytics and an understanding of how to exploit data to your advantage. This course seeks to help you to do just that while empowering you with the knowledge and information that you must know to be able to make informed business decisions. In this introduction, we will briefly cover the concept of analytics, what makes it so critical to any organization or business, how it is affecting corporate roles and business domains worldwide, and the kind of business decisions one can take aided by analytics. What is analytics? If we had to stick to a definition, the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, explanatory and predictive models to drive decision making is analytics. Sometimes the analytics are used to arrive at inputs that are then used by management to manually make decisions. And sometimes the analytics can drive fully automated decisions. What makes analytics so critical is that it bypasses reporting and understanding a company's business activities to jump into the zone of proactive decision making. It also helps future growth prospects for the company and brings into play higher value transactions. Although we may like to believe analytics to be cutting edge and a totally modern invention. The truth is that basic analytics can be done with a paper and a pencil. But today, with the explosion in information technology, data storage and processing powers, suddenly analytics is a lot easier to perform, quicker in computation and accessible to everyone. But good analytical capabilities require equally good information management systems to integrate extract, transform, and access business transaction data. This is something we will look into great detail in the next module where we outline the business analytics model. The range of analytical software also span the relatively simple Excel right up to statistical software like Minitab and to more complex business intelligence suites like SAS or predictive tools, reporting, and analytical modules of enterprise systems like SAP or Oracle. But what remains common despite your analytical tool of choice is the analytics process or methodology which we'll understand in the module on working with analytics. Before we move on to how analytics can impact businesses and make you truly competitive in the marketplace, let's try and list some of the more obvious benefits of being analytical. It helps provide direction to companies in good and more importantly bad times. Analytics can be that fallback option to rely on and give you an understanding of the dynamics of the business and what causes economic shifts and how to predict and prepare for them. It finds your winner. Analytics testing determines what is working for your business and whether changes you're implementing in systems and processes are realistically helping your company. It helps you leverage your previous investments in the company so that you can directly affect business processes. More insights, faster execution of projects, and more value. One of the more commonly known benefits is how analytics can help cut costs and increase efficiency. Think about how you may have encountered the business use of analytics. Amazon or Walmart or Google. Companies like these have milked analytics to streamline processes and systems to the point of perfection and to identify and eliminate any lags. Analytics can also help companies. Think especially of banks manage risk. When are business risks worth taking? When are they not? Also, analytics is an ongoing process and because of its continuousness in nature, you have a clear basis to check, test and then improve your decisions based on their impact. Impact of analytics on business. Any organization should be able to identify key questions about its motive, its functioning, and its long-term goals. Look at the diagram on your screen. Analytics should be able to help you answer these questions. And because of the two-dimensional conceptual approach of most analytics, that is information and insight, we can identify key questions that data and analytics can help you answer. Information, insight, past, present, future. Information, past. 
What happened? Insight, past. How and why did it happen? Information, present. What is happening now? Insight, present. What's the next best action? Information, future. What will happen? Insight, future. What's the best case or worst case situation? When it comes to the past, you can gain insights by statistical modeling activities, which will help you understand why things happened the way they did. But when you move horizontally across into the present and then into the future, this is the domain of analytics. Whether it's recommendations for the present to improve your product offerings or any additional features that your consumers are looking for or going into the future where prediction, simulation and optimization techniques will help you prepare your company for what comes next. So let's now break down these insights into actual business decisions across functions in a company. We'll be looking at this in more detail in the module on being analytically competitive but we can look at a brief overview of how analytics can affect business decisions. Marketing, finance, HR, research and development, supply chain. Marketing, pricing, store locations, targeted promotions, product customization, advertising placement. Finance, drivers of financial performance, performance scorecards, forecasts. HR, employee attrition, who to hire, employee compensations, employee benefit allotment. Research and development, desired product features, product effectiveness, product design. Supply chain, inventory estimation, placement of distribution centers and warehouses, map routing, truck loading. So it would seem logical for companies and executives to be more than gung-ho about adopting analytical practices. But that's often not the case. What makes analytics as a concept so difficult for executives today? What are the pain points when it comes to adopting analytics? Ignorance. It could simply be that executives don't understand or appreciate the competitive advantage that analytics can offer them. They are also usually the type who sees the workforce as a cost of doing business rather than an asset. Analytics is seen as too time consuming or difficult. Adopting analytic strategies across processes and systems in your company is not going to be simple. But as most successful CEOs know, there is no shortcut to success and almost never any immediate solutions to business problems. Data has to be aggregated across functions and integrated into a single system. And through this process, the data will constantly be changing, evolving and growing. But it is precisely the organic nature of data which is what is going to give you your analytics measures and the degree of dynamism and arm your company with the resources to deal with the future. Lack of an analytics plan. There is also a general sense of misunderstanding when it comes to understanding workforce analytics. Those who resist analytics are often those who actually see analytics as just being some kind of measurement. Headcount costs, turnovers, and so on. They'd see these simply as metrics and not as dynamic indicators of a company's potential, current and future, and cannot see the larger picture at hand. Being analytically competitive. Most companies today have access to massive amounts of information and data about their consumers, but there are only a few who actually make use of it. Grocery stores, companies, Brands, governments, non-profits all collect and store a lot of data, but they still don't know how to use it effectively. They make critical business decisions that affect us all, as citizens or simply as consumers. But they all don't analyze the information to make better decisions. But the change is starting. Companies may not use analytical decision making for every decision they take, but they are looking at individual decisions and wondering if they could have made a better one. They'll possibly use reporting and statistical queries to improve their decisions and keep in mind how to adapt it for the future. But this is still an evolution into an analytical frame of mind for a company. When a company adopts this analytical stance more urgently, with resolve and with long-term goals in mind, 
they immediately gain an edge over their competitors. They become analytically competitive. Let's try and think of some of the biggest brands today and then all their competitors. Email. There's the giant Gmail and then there's Yahoo, Rocketmail, Hotmail, etc. Social media. There's Facebook. Then there's Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google+, Tumblr, etc. What about video streaming? There's Netflix. And then its competitors are Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Go, etc. And there's Amazon, the big daddy of all that is online shopping. What differentiates these companies? We're living today in a time where many companies essentially offer the same product or use comparable technology or have similar high-performance business processes, although with minor differences. Geographical advantage and protective regulation are no longer advantages that companies can use. Products can be replicated, technologies can be copied and innovation-based advantage is extremely short-term in nature. Then what can the differentiator be? The only way for a business to survive and truly thrive is to execute their business with maximum efficiency and effectiveness and make intelligent decisions. And companies like Google, Walmart, Amazon, Apple and many many others have realized that analytics is the only way they can differentiate themselves from the competition. We'll take a closer look at successful companies and how they do this in a later model on being analytically competitive. Being careful with analytics. Analytics can truly revolutionize the workings of a company or a brand. But similarly, it could also lead to its downfall if it's not used correctly. System and process errors that cause people to make mistakes without using analytics can also occur when making analytical decisions. Most of them have to do with making faulty assumptions or not asking the right questions. Remember to check if you aren't making any of these errors. Are you asking the right analytical question? Have you gathered all the relevant data from all the sources? Are you making any incorrect assumptions? Have you tested your assumptions? Are you using analytics to strengthen a pre-selected answer? Have you looked at all the alternatives of what the data suggests and have you interpreted the data correctly? Have you made any mathematical or logical errors? Are your decision-making criteria insufficient or incorrect? Do you need more or better data? Can your analysis lead you to actual decision-making? There hasn't been a better example of the misuse of analytics as demonstrated in the infamous 2009 global financial meltdown. Before the crisis, there were certain assumptions that everybody considered safe to make. 1. Housing prices were always going to rise. 2. There would always be liquidity in credit markets. Both these assumptions would soon be challenged and yet remain uncorrected in most analytical models. How did this happen? Usually homeowners bought their homes with the help of mortgage lenders who gave mortgages after a series of strict background checks on whether the would-be homeowners would be able to make their payments on time. Mortgage lenders then sold bunches of these mortgages to investment bankers who bundled them up and sold them as securities to investors who wanted a higher rate of return on their investments. The problem started when Wall Street quants wanted more mortgages to create their mortgage bundle securities. Mortgage lenders reacted by issuing mortgage loans to risky homeowners, despite analytics predicting that they would default. Investment bankers continued adding fuel to the fire. They then used or rather misused analytics to create trading models that presented the mortgage-backed securities as relatively safe to buy to investors. One of the ways they did this was by making the model look at several years of trading data rather than just the relevant last couple of months. This is like a meteorologist trying to predict the onset of a hurricane by using wind speed data from the previous month. It's just not the same. But since the top bankers were now obligated to take into account the risk positions as presented in the analytical models, they chose to manipulate the data and the processes being put into the models so that 
the results would always say low risk, even as the defaults in payments started to rise. The mortgage-backed securities created by investment bankers were also worked upon so thoroughly that they were finally entered into risk management models as simplistic bonds. This is despite most people not even understanding how these complex securities had been created in the first place. So, needless to say, the analytical models were the worst placed when it came to predicting the global financial mess, although they were put to use precisely for doing just that. Lying to analytical risk models is like lying to your lawyer. They're there to help, but you're making sure that they don't. Now let's move on to the actual nuts and bolts of this course and understand how to use analytics in your business processes and systems. In the next module, we will be taking a closer look at the business analytics model and its different facets.